Welcome to the lair of the Batty Boffin. Hi there Batty fans, time for another video all about trigonometry. Now in the last videos I've been introducing these words of hypotenuse, opposite and adjacent and that's some of the jargony stuff we use to refer to the different sides. Just as a quick reminder, hypotenuse, always called hype because frankly nobody can spell it, is always the longest side of your right angled triangle. Adjacent, which is a posh word meaning next to, is the shorter side that's next to the angle that we're interested in. If the A were down here, then this side would be the adjacent. So it's always next to the angle that you're interested in. So you have to know which angle you're talking about. And the side that's opposite the angle we call opposite. So hypotenuse, opposite and adjacent. And in the other videos, we've looked at how that relates to sine and cosine. And what we did in the last video was we said that this side here is the cosine of our angle. Cosine just tells you how wide a triangle is and if you're kind of looking at it, that's the width there if you're kind of looking at it sideways. Um, and we need to make it bigger because the cosine always assumes that the hypotenuse is 1. So if your hypotenuse is bigger than 1 then you just got to kind of multiply it up. So if the hypotenuse was 2 you'd just double it. So the cosine of A and then we multiply that by whatever the hypotenuse is. Please note it's the cosine of A and when you've got the answer times it by the hypotenuse. It's not the cosine of A times the hypotenuse. You don't do the times first. Um, bid mass or bod mass, whatever you call it there, cosine comes first before multiplying. So cosine of A multiplied up by the hypotenuse just to make it bigger. And this one here similarly is the sine of our angle multiplied up by the hypotenuse just to make it bigger. So those are what we did in the last video. Um, tangent we'll deal with later on. Tangent is always to do with the slopiness of the line. But here we're just doing the length of the side sine and cosine. So from these we can actually generate some of the formulas that you may have come across um, if you're doing things like GCSEs or whatever other exams you're doing. You'll find it probably in the um, sheet of formulas at the beginning. So here is how you usually see, well one of the ways you see those formulas written out. I'm just going to write it out in this format. So we've got opposite is equal to sine of the angle, I'm going to call it A, times hypotenuse. And this one up here, the adjacent equals the cosine of the angle times the hypotenuse. So that's one way that they're written out, and that's the way that we've been using them so far. But um, another way that can be written out that's a bit more useful for using them in all kinds of different things, because this one here uh, allows you to calculate the adjacent if you've got the angle and the hypotenuse. But what if you want to get the hypotenuse or perhaps you've got the sides and you want to get the angle? So rearranging it in different ways. And here is one that's very, very popular, which is the formula triangles. So I'm just going to rub this out and draw in the formula triangles that again, you may have seen on formula sheets. So here we go with our formula triangles. I'll start off with this one here. Opposite sine and height. And I'm going to put a triangle around that. Or to put it in its letters as well, because some people like it in the letters. So what that one means there is the opposite and the sine and the hypotenuse, or here the opposite, the sine and the hypotenuse. So that's the one for this top one here. Now it's your turn, I'd like you to pause the video and see if you can write out this lower one in the same format. So pause the video and do that now. Right, you should have something like this. Adjacent is equal to cos over hypotenuse or A, C and H. We need some lines in there, don't we? Let's put some lines there. Okay. If you're not familiar with formula triangles, don't worry about them. I'll show you how to use them. They're actually very, very easy and a very handy way of doing the formulas. 
Uh, that sine and cosine, there is actually another one as well for tangents. Uh, we haven't looked at those yet, but I'll just pop the formula triangle in here. Excuse me while I move my coffee. So we'll have another formula triangle. And this one involves tangent. And that one's up and, whoops, can't even spell that, opposite and adjacent. So with all these three formula triangles here, you'll see that one has sine, one has cosine, and one has tangent. This one has opposite and hypotenuse, but doesn't mention adjacent. This one has adjacent and hypotenuse, and doesn't mention opposite. And this one has opposite and adjacent, and doesn't mention hypotenuse. So we've got all the combinations of sides. So basically, whatever sides you've got in your triangle, there will always be one of them that works. So those are our formula triangles. Sine is equal to opposite, or the, hang on, the way we had it around was opposite is sine times hypotenuse, adjacent is cosine times hypotenuse, and should you wish to do it with tangent, opposite is tangent times adjacent. Now, some ways of remembering these, there are various different ways. One that's a popular one is Sokotoa. What, you may say? Sokotoa. I'll write that out. Um, let's see, where shall I write it? I'm going to keep these ones just on here. Talk amongst yourself a minute while I write this out. Now, here is one of the popular ways of remembering the formula triangles for sine, cos and tan. Um, it's this, which I'm afraid is not a particularly good drawing, which is why I teach maths, not art. But it's supposed to look like a volcano with a giant sock on the top, which you might think is a slightly strange thing. And you would be right. A long time ago, um, there was a volcano called Krakatoa, which exploded with one of the loudest noises ever been known to a history and kind of blew half the side of an island off. Um, this humongous volcano was called Krakatoa. And I had a thought that if um, they used as a means of containing the volcanic explosion, this is some lava, some magma coming down here, they could have put a giant sock on the top to keep it all in. You see, that would have been a good idea, wouldn't it? You may think I'm going mad here. But the reason for doing this rather silly picture is that hopefully you can remember the slightly daft word of Sokatoa. Sokatoa. It's like Krakatoa, but it's a sock. Sokatoa. You're probably still thinking I'm mad here. Why on earth would you want to remember that? Well, because it forms the initial letters of the formula triangles that we want. So here we go. So. If I write so like that and put a triangle on it, you can put these little doodars here. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, or opposite is sine times hypotenuse. If you've not ever used these formula triangles, they're brilliant. What you do is you cover up the bit you want, and what's left is the formula. So if you want the formula for opposite, you just cover up the O, and it tells you it's sine times hypotenuse, which is what we've done in previous videos. Sine, if you want to calculate that, is opposite over hypotenuse, and if you wanted to calculate the hypotenuse, it's opposite over sine. So that's the divide, and that's the times there. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and we get that from the so bit. You have to say Sokotoa like you're um, doing a very badly dubbed karate film. So Sokotoa, like that, you see. So that's the so bit. The next bit, the ka, gives us the next formula. OK, it works exactly the same way. See if you can work out how that goes. So see if you can draw the triangle that comes from ka. It's done exactly the same way. Pause the video and have a go. OK, so for ka, we should have ka. You just write the middle letter a bit higher up. And then we can turn that into a triangle, which gives us the formulas that adjacent is cosine times hypotenuse, or cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Same thing now with the to'a. Now, we haven't actually done tangents yet. We've been doing sines and cosines, but it works exactly the same way. So just follow the pattern and have a go at doing the one for to'a. Pause the video.
All right, here we go. Toa. Remembering we're at the middle one a little bit higher. And then we just turn that into a formula triangle, which tells us that tangent is opposite over adjacent. Which you can find the other ones from there. We'll use that one later on. So that's a way of remembering the formula triangle. Sokotoa. There are lots of other ways. Um, some people have uh, silly old Harry can always have tons of afters or something like that. I really don't mind how you learn them as long as you know them. Um, Sokotoa is the one I'm going to be using because that's my favourite and I just quite like the idea of putting a volcano inside a giant sock. So I'll see you next time for using some of this. Bye for now, Batty fans. Mwah! Mwah! Mwah!